Course 3, Lesson 83 is probability of dependent events. This is compared to independent events, and dependent are ones that, of course, depend on what comes before it. So let's look at um, just a little bit about the difference between these two. Now we've seen before that when we want events to occur together, we need to multiply the events. Things like if we want the probability of getting a 1 on the number die and then after a second we'll get a 2. Well, we will multiply that the probability of getting 1 on that number die is 1 sixth. The probability of getting a 2 on the number die is 1 sixth and we multiply them to get 1 36th. That's saying that we have a 1 36th chance of rolling 1 and then right after it getting a 2. This is for independent events. Rolling dice is independent because it doesn't matter what I get on that first roll, I still have the same opportunity opportunities on the second roll. So independent events are events that have nothing to do with each other. This includes things like tossing a coin and rolling a die, spinning a spinner and drawing a card. These don't really matter what comes before it because regardless if I get a heads or a tails on the coin first, I'm still going to be able to roll a 1 through 6 on the dice. So they are independent. Dependent or conditional events, on the other hand, is one event depends on the other. For example, think about a deck of cards. All of those cards, and we draw one out, and we keep it. Okay, we keep that card. Well, I have one less card in the bunch, so when I draw another card, I have a smaller pool to draw from. Okay, really this is key words in here. Whenever something is not replaced or put back, we're calling this dependent probability. So if we have a bucket of marbles, I draw one out, keep it, and draw another one, that is dependent probability. So when we say with replacement, that means we're going to put it back. That's independent probability. When we say without replacement, that's dependent probability. Even though these are very different, we are still going to multiply. So let's look at this example. Two 8th graders and one 7th grader go on a trip, but only two students will be selected. If their names are randomly drawn, what's the probability that two 8th graders will get to go? So basically in a bucket we have three sets of paper, one with each uh, student, one 8th grader, another 8th grader, and one 7th grader. So on the first pull, we could get an 8th grader, an 8th grader, or a 7th grader. But let's say we go to the second pull. Well, if we got an 8th grader on the first one, then on our second draw, we could get another 8th grader or the 7th grader. And similarly, with the other 8th grader, we could get an 8th and a 7th. Lastly, if we pull out a 7th grader on the first draw, we could get an 8th grader or another 8th grader. It's certain that we will get an 8th grader on that pull. But the question is, what's the probability that both 8th graders will get to go? Well, let's see how many outcomes we have first of all. So if I were to list out my sample space, I would say that I have eight and eight. Okay, looking at this one right here. We could have eight and then seven. We could have another eight and eight. Okay, right here. Another eight and seven. We could have a seven and eight and then another seven and eight, finishing it off. So we have six different outcomes, six outcomes. And whenever we do probability, we say, I want the success rate divided by the outcomes. So I would say my success rate is when I get two eighth graders together. So we have two out of six that are successful. So the probability of getting two eighth graders is one third. Now, sometimes this can get pretty complicated if we try to do a tree diagram with all of them. So maybe instead of doing a tree diagram, let's try it with some of our, um, our probabilities for each. Okay, so same situation. What's the probability of the first person being selected being an eighth grader? Well, since we have three slips of paper, an eight, an eight, and a seven, 
that probability would be two thirds. Because we have three outcomes, two of them will make me successful in getting an eighth grader. Next, let's assume that the first person selected is an eighth grader. So I only have two slips of paper left, an eighth grader and a seventh grader. So what is the probability of the second person selected being an eighth grader? Well, since I only have two slips of paper left now, and one of them being an eighth grader, the probability is one half. So lastly, since these are the two things that we need, what do we do with the probabilities? We multiply them together. So I would do two thirds times one half would give me two sixths, which is one third. So looking at the probabilities, we get the same thing. Basically, all we are doing is saying, what is the probability of getting the first event, getting an eighth grader? And then once that eighth grader is gone, what's the probability of getting the next eighth grader? And we just multiply the events. Now, let's do some examples of this. So we have two very similar problems right here. One, where we select a uh, blue and put it back. The other, we select a blue and keep it. This is the difference between independent probability, putting it back, and dependent probability. So let's look at how these are very similar, but definitely come out different. So we have five marbles, three blue, and two white. What is the probability of selecting a blue first? So I want the probability of getting a blue and then getting a white. So we start with the probability of getting a blue. Well, then we're going to multiply it by the probability of getting a white. So the probability of getting a blue, I have five total marbles and three are blue. And then I look at my white. Since this is independent probability, I am putting it back. So I still have five marbles, but two of them are white. And I multiply these together. And I get six twenty-fifths. Now we still want in the second problem a blue and then a white, but instead I really like that blue so I'm going to keep it. So when we go to do our probability, it's the same. Probability of blue and then the white. But when we look, we have probability of blue, that's going to be still 3 out of 5. But when we go to do the probability of a white, since we kept that blue, we only have 4 marbles left which two of them are white. And it comes out that my probability is 6 over 20, and we reduce it to say that is 3 tenths. Okay, Very important to know which is which so that you can, uh, you can conduct the correct probability. All right, let's practice deciding if something is independent or dependent. So number one, earning grades on your test and earning your final semester grade. Well, that is in that is deep. Your final semester grade depends on what you got on your tests in, earlier in the quarter. Okay, number two, selecting a red apple and then selecting a green apple from a bag of six red and four green apples. If no apples are returned to the bag, so I am going to take those out, I'm going to select a red apple, eat it, and then select a green apple. Since we're not replacing it, this is dependent probability. Next one. Selecting a red apple and then green from bag of six, four green, bag of six red and four green. The first apple is returned before the next selection. So you're pulling out an apple, looking at the color and putting it back in before you select another one. Since we are returning it, this is independent probability. Tossing a coin and rolling a die. Well, it doesn't matter if I get heads or tails on that coin, I'm still going to be able to roll anything on that die, so these are independent events. Okay. How about this one? You have a bag of marbles, five green, three blue, six red, and seven purple. You grab a marble and do not return it to the bag. Since we're not returning it, this is without replacement. 
we would say this is dependent probability. Now let's practice a couple of these. Probability of getting a blue and then getting a green. Well, let's look at how many total marbles we have. We have five green, three blue, six red, and seven purple. Well, when we add five and three, six and seven, we get, let's see, eight and six, 14, 21 marbles total. So we know that when we look at that blue, trying to get that blue to begin with, it's going to be something out of 21. Well, we have three blue, so that's going to be three out of 21 chance to get a blue. Now, since this is dependent, we are going to keep the marble. So we only have 20 marbles left. And we look at how many green ones. We have five green. Well, before we go any further, let's simplify a little bit. Three can th go into three once. Three can go into 21 seven times. Five can go into five once. And five can go into 24 times. And we just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. And we find that the probability of getting a blue and then a green without replacement is 1 28th. Let's look at the red. Very, very similar. We start with the same amount, 21. This is a new problem, so all the marbles are back in. And we have six of them being red. Well, since we're not replacing it, we now only have 20 marbles. And we look and we see we have seven purple. Well, let's simplify. Seven can go into seven once and into 21 three times. Six can, or two can go into six three times and can go into 20 10 times. And then lastly, this three and this three can actually cancel out to be a one and a one. And we find that we have a one out of 10 possibility of getting a red and then getting a purple. These are all dependent events because it depends on what you get on that first draw to figure out what our full probability is. I hope this was helpful for your homework and for studying.